brought to you by Kellogg's. The folks who bring the best to you each morning. A wide choice of cereals in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now that wonderfully talented young man who in September will start his own series, The Joey Bishop Show. Here he is himself, Joey Bishop. Thank you, Alan. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the, uh, the Dorothy of the Dorothy and Dick Radio Show, which is very popular, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. our panelist that we're very proud of because he's been on the bestseller list for 28 weeks consecutively with his book Out on a Limerick, the never out on a limb Bennett Surf. And here's that master of the scintillating Sally and the ribald repost, good old John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line and the alliterative, not the illiterate, the alliterative, Mr. Surf, to whom we trust we'll give a pleasant half hour in the next few minutes. Nice to have you again with us, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Daly. And that's be the end of any kind words on this program. We'll also have a famous mystery challenger before the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Helen. Tweed, right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs. Tweed? Mrs. Mrs. Tweed, and where are you from? Jamaica, New York. Jamaica, New York. Out on Long Island? Yes, it? sir. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here, Mrs. Tweed? Uh, do you know how we keep score on What's My Line? All right, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Mrs. Tweed is salaried and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with Joey Bishop. Is it a service that we members of the panel could take advantage of? <clears throat> yes. Is it a, uh, a service in which one of us would come to you? Well, I would say I mean, if any you're... member of the panel intended to make use of the service, it would require that you go to get the service, yes. Then I'm safe in assuming that she would not come to any one of our houses. That's a fair assumption. Not a boy, John. <laughs> See, now it's getting exciting. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it a, uh, a service that would benefit any one of us? Yes. Would the benefit be uh, physical rather than educational? Well, I would say that the benefit does not necessarily wind up as either physical or educational. The benefit would come to you because you wanted a certain service performed and it was performed for you. You're telling me I got a no, Joe. That's right, yes. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you mind explaining Joey's no? Well, Joey asked if the, the benefit would be physical specifically. And the answer is that the benefit that you would seek uh, would gratify you, but it isn't necessarily to be described as physical. Is there anything artistic or creative about what you do? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Tweet, you know that's what the birdies do out of Jamaica. Tweet, tweet, tweet. I couldn't help <laughs> thinking of that. But, um, <laughs> nice of you to think so. Do you, uh, do you work, Mrs. Tweet, for a non-profit making organization? 
yet. It yet. is a non-profit banking organization. Would you say, therefore, you are this, uh, an employee of either the city, state, or federal government? No. Uh, Some yes, government he said job? City, state, oh, or federal, federal. yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Might it, might it conceivably be a local government? No. Well, yes, local would be um, in I the mean, sense local of a to community government. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, has it got anything to do with the penal or judicial surroundings in the town in which you labor? Yes. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to give it to him? I say no. You say no. That was very gently done. Had to change your mind. Had to change your mind. That three dollars and seven to go, Miss Francis. Does your job have anything to do whatsoever with communications of any kind? Yes. Uh, we are accepting the word communications in its broadest sense when we give you an affirmative answer. Well, that's generous of you, uh, John. Dear. Um, would you have anything whatsoever to do with paperwork? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Bishop. When you said we were accepting communication in its broadest sense, you meant not necessarily a form of transportation? Uh, what I meant was that it would include transportation, everything. radio, telephone, telegraph, you know, every, every means of communication, the transfer of a body physically from one locus to another, a communication of a message Local through some means of transmission, etc., etc. <laughs> is is your uh, a, a job a political appointment? Is your job a political appointment? No. no. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with a vehicle? Yes. Is it a vehicle with wheels? Yes. Uh, do you drive the vehicle? Yes. Uh, and this vehicle is not, you say, connected with the penal system That's or right. judicial system? Well, we said there was no relationship to the mm -hmm. penal or judicial system. Ah, uh, well, good heavens. It couldn't be a fire truck, could it? <laughs> no, yes, it could not be a fire truck, no. Um, do you, does your work have anything to do with animals? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Do you put anything into the vehicle that you drive, Mrs. Tweet? Are things put into this vehicle? <laughs> Gasoline, you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> I mean, uh, would it have anything to do, whatever, with the post office department? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Uh, are any people uh, or things in this vehicle when you are uh, operating it? Yes. Uh... You are not a dog catcher. No. <laughs> no. No. Are any children ever in this vehicle? Sometimes. Could you possibly have anything to do with uh, a school bus of any kind? Of any kind? What kind is it? I would say no, since the designation is a school bus, the, the issue here is you have nothing to do with a school bus, so we'd have to give you a no. That's eight down and two to go, Mr. Bishop. Uh, have you anything, let me take a wild guess, have anything to do with the Red Cross? No, nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you Gallagher. drive a regular bus for transporting people? Yes, that's right, and that's the answer. A bus driver from New York City bus <laughs> Actually, the New York City Transit Company is your employer, which is, as, as you all know, a city-owned facility. And uh, Mrs. Tweed drives in Queens. The bus is the Q... 3A. Q3A, and it runs from uh, Jamaica to where? To Queens Village. To Queens Village. And you've been driving for how long? 19 years. For 19 years. Isn't that wonderful? Learned how to drive. How did you learn to how drive? How many accidents have you had, Mrs. Tweed? None. None? Absolutely one, none. One. Of course. Absolutely none at all. Thank you very much, Mr. Tweed. Nice to have you about this.
And now let's meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Jerry? Moore, right? Where are you from, Mr. Moore? Centerville, Iowa. Centerville, Iowa? That's right. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel, Mr. Moore? Can you join me over here? You know how we keep score. All right, we'll let the audience here and at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, Mr. Moore is self-employed and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Well, Mr. Moore, could I use your service? Yes. This would, re this would require, to be fair, that you uh, held a certain status. Of course. Uh, what Mr. Moore means is that under certain circumstances, if you had need of his particular kind of service, you would be free to engage that service. Do this fine, and then John mixes me up. <laughs> well, actually, what I'm trying to say here yes. is... Yes, if I John, was in a certain status, I could use his service. That's right. I don't want you to feel that in your present position as a member, for instance, of the panel or a performer yes. in television that you'd necessarily use it. Yes, all right. Well, if I were in different, different shape than I'm in... <laughs> <laughs> if I, uh... <laughs> I can't get that out of my mind. Um... Would I come to you for your service? Yes. Uh, does your service have anything to do with the armed services? No. No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Bishop. Uh, is it then a, a, a civilian job? A civilian job. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. He's self I don't know. I'm confused. Anyway, I hear four bright people, and the man's name is Gary Moore, and we don't know what he does. <laughs> um, is it a service that both male and female could come to you for? Yes. Is it a service that makes us feel happier after we've had it? You mean particularly and specifically happier? I mean, woo! Now that'll give you two, two down and eight to go, Miss Phil Young. Uh, would people on farms be more likely to employ your services than people in cities? Yes. Uh, does your service have anything to do with either children or animals? Anything to do with either children or animals? Yes. Does it have more to do with animals? Yes. Are these domestic animals? Yes. Are they four-footed animals? Yes. Are they cows or steers? No. no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Iowa is kind of famous for its hogs. Is it anything to do with the pig family? No. No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Well, if it's domestic, we're kind of left with horses and dogs, which are my favorite. No. 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 Oh, well, <laughs> okay. Centerville ain't big enough for you and me. <laughs> five down and five to go, Mr. Bishop. Oh, go. I must say, in all honesty, I don't know of any other four-footed animal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Lions, tigers, elephants. D domesticated, we, we were led to believe. Oh, I'm from Africa. I forgot, of course. <laughs> not here. Oh. Um, goats? No. no, that's six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Four-legged? Yeah. <laughs> Are these considered domesticated in Iowa, but not domesticated in New York? Is this some far-out animal, like a buffalo or something? No, no, they're just fine domesticated animals. That was animals. just a rhetorical question. Oh, that was rhetorical. All right, then you go ahead, Dorothy. Cause All right, I think you have a right to another I question. I think of sheep. Or lambs? Yeah. Oh. Are you a sheep shearer? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moore travels, uh, travels around from farm to farm. and uh, she I don't sheep think Arlene would have much use for him, frankly. <laughs> no, well, well, that's why I tried. You see, the, it's a, a difficult question to answer, the one that Arlene, because you could, if you, either one of you should go out to Iowa and buy a farm and raise sheep, then you, you could use Mr. Moore. You to knit a sweater or something? Knit a sweater. You could go out and buy and then get the, Mr. Moore come on and take the, and there you were, you know. Mr. Moore well, we shares the wealth, time. doesn't he? Beg your pardon? He shares the wealth. Shares the, yes. Well, thank you very much, Bennett. I don't know how, well, he does, though. Bestseller list for all this time. <laughs> Mr. Moore, thank you very much for being our guest. It was nice to have you on that time.
We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger. This, of course, requires that my colleagues on the panel be blindfolded. The blindfolds are in place, panel? Yes, yes, yes sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to the different form of questioning, which requires that each of you ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise. And let's begin with uh, Bennett Cerf. <clears throat> in the course of your professional work, do you ever burst into song? <laughs> Miss Fred? <laughs> uh, do you burst into song in the theater? Mr. Bishop? Was that a, a yes answer? That was a yes. Mm -hmm. From the sound of it, I think it's a flea circus. <laughs> I lost my place. <laughs> um, are you a recording artist? Yes. Ms. Kilgallen? Uh, have you, within the last three months, played Basin Street East? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Do, do your songs ever include comedy? Do they make people laugh at the same time that you're singing them? Yes! Miss Francis? Was that yes or no? That was a yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's a man or a woman. Uh, I think it's a bird. <laughs> uh, um, have you appeared in, um, in nightclubs? Yes! Mr. Bishop? Where are you? Wait, I'm here, I'm here, but, uh, you know, I may have to disqualify myself on, uh, uh, on ignorance. <laughs> uh, because of your applause, I would also like to take a wild guess. Does Arlene Francis' name, is it uh, similar to yours? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you appear frequently on television? No, I would say that's it, yes and no. Their appearances are frequent, but just how frequent is hard to determine in terms of the question. Mr. Sir? Did a song called Diamonds or a Girl's Best Friend help make you famous? No. No? Three out and seven to go, Miss Francis. Well, are you an actress as well as a singer? Yes. Mr. Bishop? If this is Sophie Tucker, I'll die. <laughs> An actress as well as a singer. Have you ever done anything in a Broadway show? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, have you appeared as recently as this past season in a Broadway show? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Oh. Uh, have you got a pretty big mouth? Well, that's a, that's a hard one, I Betty. mean, is it I'm... part of your, uh, is it, has it anything to do with your reputation of a very pliable mouth that you can twist around? I'm thinking of Martha Ray. Well, that's what is we Is it thought... Martha Ray? No, no, it's not Martha Ray. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Oh, my word. Now, wait a minute. An actress sings. Not in a play this last year. Have you, uh, have you appeared in pictures? Mr. Bishop? Want to tell us one of the pictures? <laughs> <laughs> was the picture a, uh, that you were in, or were you in it um, uh, for the musical part of it rather than the acting part of it? That makes it uh, six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you dance, too? Yes! Mr. Sir? Was one of the pictures Lady in the Dark? That's free to go, Miss Francis. Would, would you be considered a leading lady rather than a character actress? Yes. Mr. Bishop? Are you Tony Martin's wife? <laughs> no. Eight out of two to go, Miss Kilgallen. I think we're going to do it. Are you blonde? No. Nine out of one to go, Mr. Bishop. Not Smith. blonde? Not blonde? Not blonde. Are you beautiful? Yeah. 
That doesn't help me a bit. <laughs> Why, well, I guess we might as well take a, a wild guess. Uh, uh, are you Jane Powell? No, ten down and none to go. We finally fooled you. Earth a kit, Powell. <laughs> job of disguising the voice that, there's a, that, that happened here for a long time. I think actually, was it Joey who said it sounded like a bird? It did, yeah. too, sound yes. like a bird. Well, I remember when I was on the last time, I spoke almost in my normal voice, and Dorothy got it right away. Oh, yes. So. I was a little bit scared when they started asking if you had in the last three months been on Broadway, because I heard they'd get into it the last three months in the nightclub, and then I think they'd have had it. But you're going, to do a, you're going to do a play, aren't you, Miss Kitt? Yes, I'm talking about doing one this coming season. That's what I heard. I hope so. Or at least the earlier part of 62. Uh, you have some uh. other plans, personal ones, haven't you, Miss Kitt? Very intimate ones? Yes, I do. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say that you've demonstrated your talents and abilities as an actor again tonight. Thanks so much Thank for you. being Thank our you. guest. It's been nice to have you with us. Thank Thank you. You. And we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now let's meet another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Patricia uh, Tavis? Janice. Janice Broder, right? <laughs> Miss or Mrs. Mrs. Broder? Mrs. Broder, and where are you from? Springfield, New Jersey. Springfield, New Jersey. May I present the panel? Would you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score? All right, we'll let the audience in the theater and at home know exactly what your line is. Mrs. Broder is salaried and deals in a service. Let's begin the general questioning, and we have very little time with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you deal in a service that men and women can enjoy? Yes. Do you work indoors? Yes. Do you work with your hands? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Broder, do you work for a non-profit making organization? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with entertainment in any way, in any form? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Bishop. Do you speak to the people you come in contact with? Yes. Is it on an advisory basis that you speak to them? Yes, sometimes. Uh, is what you do, does it require a, uh, a diploma? Uh, Not specifically a diploma. No, we'd have to give you a no on the issue of a diploma specifically, but I think it's fair to say it does require special training of a, of a particular character. Ms. Kilgallen. Do you ever deal with young people? Yes. Uh, now, when, when you say young people, what do you mean? People like us, John. Oh, well, <laughs> sure. Well, in that case, certainly, absolutely, yes. Um, when they go away after speaking to you or doing whatever they do, uh, do they feel better? Spiritually or physically? Well, again, we're in a hot area. The service is provided. If it is successful as the recipients would want it to be, then certainly they feel better for it, mm -hmm. yes. Well, since you don't do anything with your hands, do you move about at all in your work? Not specifically. No, no. not necessarily. Five down and five was to go, Mr. Sir. Was that Mrs. Broder does not do anything with her hands? Yes. That was yes. established. Now, this it? is beyond the normal use of the hands, which is necessary yes. to the functioning in any employment. Do you demonstrate or show anything? Not no. Mm -hmm. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Would you be liable at any time to come in contact with the press in your work? Could. I could. You could. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to do with people in government? Not specifically. Not specifically. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Bishop. Is what you do in the form of instruction? No. Not entirely. Sometimes we run out of time. Actually, Mrs. Broder is a stockbroker uh, and has been for three years. He's registered with the New York Stock yes. Exchange, and you work with what firm? Richard Cohen in New Jersey. Richard Cohen in New Jersey. Now, this makes the whole business of buying stocks, you see, take on a whole new dimension. Thank you very much Thank for you. being our guest. It's nice to have you with us. <laughs> and now 
now we have just a few seconds for a quick goodbye. Nice to have you with us, Joey, and good night, Miss Fence. Thank you, John. It's nice to have me with you, too, isn't it? Good night, Joey. <laughs> good night, Arlene. Good night, Doc. Good night, Joey. Good night, Bennett. Good night, Mr. Daly. Good night, Bennett. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. The preceding program was pre-recorded. This is Bud Collier reminding you to expect the unexpected and some fun as well in the game to tell the truth tomorrow on most of these stations. <laughs>